Okay. I started it because I wanted to skip all the beginning stuff. So welcome to West Sound Coder Dojo. I'm Charles Keating. I'm turning the floor over to Tim Duffy. All right. Excellent. Uh, thank you. Uh, so yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, this is our first um, kind of app lab thing, uh, demonstrating how you can use JavaScript to um, build an app uh, through code.org's website. Um, so let's uh, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and uh, show you a quick video to get started here. Um, can you all see my screen? Yes, okay, great. Uh, okay, so um, if you would like to follow along, uh, code.org uh, slash educate slash app lab, and then you click this little try it out, um, I can actually post that into the chat. Uh, hopefully I can find the chat. Do, 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 do. There it is, chat. All right, I'm just gonna plop that right there if you'd like to follow along. Um, otherwise, uh, hang tight and just enjoy the ride. Um, so let's get started with uh, this video. And I wanna make sure that I am sharing um, audio and let's just hope it works. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you can hear the audio. We can hear it, but it's low. The volume is very low, it's just very small. Hey, Tim. Yeah. Can you adjust the volume of the video as it plays through Chrome? Like Chrome sounds or whatever is doing the video? No. Oh, wow. OK. You can't hear it. OK. Uh, so she's just going to give a demo of how it works. I am going to do the That's same me. thing. Nobody What's else that? said anything. Is anybody else having problems with the video? If you are, throw your, or not the video, the audio of it. Can you hear it? No. Okay. Bill, Bob just gave us a thumbs down. Yeah. Same everybody. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, let's, let's just skip that part. Uh, it's not a, not an entirely important. Uh, she was uh, an intern at uh, code.org and she actually built out uh, some of the features of App Lab. And she was just giving a quick demo and a little background on uh, her experience. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, the demo for you live. So I guess we could just go ahead and get right to it. Um, so we're going to click this little continue button that gets us to the next step. Uh, so what they actually want you to do is um, this actually starts out with like red here. It looks like I already started this previously. Just try it out. Um, each of these different sections is given a goal, uh, and then they tell you kind of how to do it. And then if you're stuck, then they give you a little GIF image, uh, GIF or Jeff, if you <laughs> want to pick that apart. Um, so, and then you have uh, a run button on the left with your app, your preview of your app shown here on the left. So, uh, a lot of what this first section it concentrates on is this set property block. And that's a function in JavaScript. And a function is just a set piece of um, uh, code that allows you to um, repeat a certain instruction multiple times if you like. Um, so what this. And balance and let me know which Apple product can I afford? Uh, anyway, um, so with this 
uh, UI, they also give you the option of showing the text version, what you would actually see in JavaScript if you were to do it in a text file. Um, if you were to do your coding in a text file, this is what it ac would actually look like. Um, I will zoom in a little bit. Hopefully, that actually helps everybody see what this looks like. Um, so remember, a program is just a set of instructions. And so JavaScript is a language that has, these, uh, has the ability to tell the computer what to do. Um, so in this case, set property is telling, um, telling our app, which runs on JavaScript, hey, I want to set um, screen one, which is this screen, uh, its background color to red. Um, so we hit the reset and hit run, and guess what? It's red. Uh, so uh, the goal of this uh, actual uh, piece, this, this first part of the app lab, is to set the color to green. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit more simple, show the blocks. And uh, you can actually hit this little drop down button on the left over here and come down and we're going to say green. Uh, again, uh, this is just doing the same thing. We could have typed it out if we wanted to. Uh, either way, same thing. And then we're going to hit reset here and then hit run. And yay, our screen looks white, like what they are asking for. Um, all right. so. The next step um, is to go to the next section. Um, unlike a lot of other code.org uh, lessons, um, this one will not verify your code uh, past the uh, just making sure that your code syntax is correct. So say if I uh, put a one here, hit reset and try to run it, uh, it will give me a warning or an error down here in this little collapsible section. It's a little debug console that uh, shows you maybe maybe you did something wrong. Um, so it doesn't know what one is for a color. Um, past that, uh, it won't tell you like if your code is right or wrong, if the solution is right or wrong. Um, the only way that you're going to know if it's right or wrong is if you click here. Um, and they show you exactly what they expect of you. Now, I encourage you not to click on that little um, image uh, when you're doing the app lab yourself um, until you've given it the whole college try, you know, giving it a, giving it a good try uh, before, or if you get stuck, go ahead and click on it. All right, um, so we're gonna make sure that this still works. And I'm gonna go to green and uh, hit reset and run. You'll notice the debug console clears. I'm just gonna hide that. Um, and off we go to the next part. Um, yeah, so if you're in control, you have to check your own work and decide when you're done. So we're gonna continue on. Uh, this next section is uh, about formatting text on the screen. So, um, what they're asking you to do is say, OK, um, you have this set text right here. Uh, you can access it with a, a label 1. And you can change the font size property. And you can change the color. Uh, and they want you to make it look like this. So make me bigger in blue. Uh, so the first step is to drag and drop our first set of instructions here. Uh, so we're going to set the label property. Um, they already have this text color filled out for us, so that's kind of convenient. We're going to go ahead and change this to oops, blue. Um, great. So our text color is blue, and we run it. And it looks doesn't look exactly like this. Uh, so that means we're missing one set of instructions here. You can actually call. Uh, a function in JavaScript multiple times. And that's the beauty of it, uh, of making functions. You can have a preset of set of instructions, and you can call it multiple times without having to rewrite that same set of logic or that same set of code. Uh, you just simply call the function, 
and it'll do what you ask it to do. Um, so in this case, we're setting the label property text color to red, um, but we actually have more options under this piece right here. Um, so uh, we have the ability to set the text, we have the ability to set the width, the height, all of this good stuff, but what we're actually after is the text color. Uh, excuse me, uh, the font size and this part. So we're gonna scroll down to font size and uh, we're given the option to change it to whatever value, value we want, it just has to be a number. So they're, they give you a preset numbers here, but you can go and set your own if you'd like. And in this case, we need to set it to 80 because that's what the instructions say. We're gonna hit reset and run. And guess what? We, uh, we did it. We met our goal. Um, so uh, any questions so far? Looking good. Here, I'm gonna good. open up the chat window, hopefully. If not, there we go. I wanna make sure that I see everybody's yeah. So I was uh, wondering when you, um, I've got uh, a create button up here for the uh, lab app, but not following your tutorial. I just basically have the generic uh, lab app. Um, and when we're setting the label one, all I have for a drop down is ID and the screen one. So how can I change to label one and is label one the um, a variable that gets generated? Uh, hey Bob, let's let's concentrate on this current lesson for everybody. Um, okay, I great. can I can get into a breakout room after I'm done here with you. Oh, yeah, and no, troubleshoot. No yeah. No Do you have any questions for what we're working on here? Anybody have any other questions? I was all going to add labels generally refer to things that you just tag almost like comments. They're usually not. Um, they're attributes of other objects, but they're not variables in themselves. Bob. So, but yeah, I, I think we should stick with Tim's uh, script because it's yeah. kind of a specific uh, project. I'd also add that if you point at the make me bluer, bigger and bluer, you'll show that that's in a label one. Also, yeah. just an object that's created with text. I get you. Yeah, just move your mouse over on top of that. Yeah. So you have an ID you. label one. Uh, so the set property matches. If you look right here, you got an ID, a property, and a value. So the ID is matched here. And we'll get a little bit more into that later. Um, they actually go over that. Uh, so uh, let's, let's continue on. Um, if there are no more questions, please put them in the chat or I'll break every once in a while for questions. I'll, I'll see if there's something in chat, I'll raise my finger or something. I'll, I'll give you a flag. I'll okay. keep going. Excellent. All right. So uh, this next section uh, deals with buttons. Uh, so interactive pieces, uh, inputs. So like if you're running around uh, your app and you want to make uh, allow people to do, um, say, make a button blue or make a button red, you can do that. Um, so uh, what here is we're just going to set the properties of the buttons. Later on, we'll actually make the buttons do something. So again, we're just going over the set property piece. It's, it's very uh, important um, function for this app lab. Um, so we, we just got to keep going here and we'll get to the more interesting stuff here in a minute. Um, so, uh, what they want me to do is, uh, make the buttons red and blue. Um, looks like the left one is going to be red and the right one's going to be blue. And they say like, we, we just talked about, remember you can hover over the elements shown on the screen and uh, it'll show their ID. Um, so in this case, uh, the left one to make me red is button ID one, excuse me, ID button one, and this one's ID button two. Uh, so we can set the background uh, color by setting the 
the background color property on the button. So let's start with um, button one on the left. And uh, so we're gonna be doing this Hi. one. Hi, could you mute your mic real quick? Sorry about that. I'll, I'll break for questions and stuff here in a minute, okay? Um, oh, hey, all right, well, welcome. Welcome all. Uh, yes. Um, okay. So we got button one, and we need to set it to uh, the background color to looks like red here. So let's give that a shot. All right. So we made our button red, and we're going to go ahead and make the right button blue. Um, so you can either type it in or you can select it from the top down and we're going to make that background color uh, blue. Excellent. Okay. Uh, and then the last step. So you notice that uh, write code to change my text doesn't match. Welcome to my app. Um, now we can set it to whatever we want. I'm simply just going to copy the text because I don't know, I'm lazy. Uh, and then I'm just gonna paste that right there. Well, okay, I guess I have to use my keyboard. No, okay, there we go. So run that and voila, we, uh, we have a matching app to what they are asking for to the goal. So I think we met our goal here. Um, but you can set this text to whatever you want. It doesn't have to be welcome to my app. You can set the colors to whatever you want. The point is you're learning and uh, that's, that's the exciting part here. All right, so we're gonna finish up here and have another video. Uh, let's see, share computer sound. Okay, let's, let's try this again. Um, I am sharing my sound now, so hopefully this works. Please give me a heads up if you can't hear anything. Apps are really cool because it's kind of like starting your own business. I mean, you get to design everything from the ground up, you get to manage everything, and you're the owner of this piece of work that you just created with code. Now that you can change the look of your app, let's make it interactive by responding to events. Events are user actions, like clicking a button, scrolling through a menu, or hovering over a picture. Interactive apps need ways to respond to events, like playing a sound when I click this button. To do this in App Lab, you'll need to use a new block called OnEvent. This program sets the screen to blue. I want the screen to turn green when I click this button. First, I'll need to drag in an on event block. By hovering, I know the button's ID is big button, so I'll select that in the first dropdown. Next, I'll choose the type of event. There's lots of options you can pick from, but right now I'll leave it as a regular old click. Finally, I'll add code inside the on event that will change the background color of the screen. You can read this block like a sentence. On the event that the button is clicked, run all this code. Let's test it. Blocks outside an on event still run right away, so the screen starts blue. And when I click the big button, the code inside my on event runs, and my screen turns green. If you want to change more things after the event, like the text on the screen, just add more code to the on event. To make your program respond to more events, add more on event blocks. Just make sure not to put them inside of each other. Now it's time to try it out for yourself. Have fun! Excellent. Uh, so let's get into it. Um, great. Excellent. So, uh, so the goal of this um, particular section is uh, the screen will start out blue, add code, code so it turns green when you click the greenify button. 
Um, so we're going to need to use the on event as she described and set the background color to green. Um, so uh, when she was giving her demo, she noted that uh, the ID of the button is big button as shown here on the left. And it looks like the on event is already set up for us. We got big button right here and we're gonna wait for a click and we're gonna set our property of the screen, screen one, ID screen one, uh, to the background color green. So let's uh, select from the drop down if we want to, or you can type it in. We're gonna go ahead and run it. So you'll note that the color already changed to blue because we had this preset um, function call here, screen one, background color, blue. Um, so now it's waiting for the big button click. So we're gonna go ahead and click it and voila, it's green. Excellent. Uh, any questions so far? I think it's good. Okay. We're How did gonna get the text of the green fight button. Uh, I didn't quite ca catch that. What was that? How did she change the text on the green fight button? Oh, um, well let's let's keep going here. Uh, I can always go back. I think they might ask us to do it here. Um, they, they didn't. Okay, so let's go back to lesson six here. If, if you wanted to change the button text, you set your property of the big button. I'm going to click that drop down. So you have big button here. And coming on down to, I believe it's text. There it is, text. And then uh, it worked, I think, is what she had in her demo. So we're going to run that. And then voila, it worked. Awesome. Cool. Well, good question. All right. Let's keep going here. Uh, OK, so let's help create this flashlight app. So when you click on, uh, Button, the on button already turns the screen white. Run the app and try it out. Then write code so off button makes the screen black again. All right, so if we already run this, the on turns it white, the off does nothing because we haven't set any logic to do anything with the off button yet. So we're gonna reset. So we're gonna have to uh, change the background color of the screen. Uh, screen, uh, label one, I guess, excuse me. Uh, that'll be the screen. Okay, so set the property here of screen one. And background color is going to be black. Yeah, there we go. Uh, but what, what, what happens if we do that? Um, so we do that. And then we turn it off, and then all of a sudden our text is gone. That's unfortunate. Uh, the reason is we haven't set our label color back to white. So we're going to reset again. You'll note that at the very beginning, the flashlight app text is actually white. So we'll need to set it back because we're setting it to black here. We're going to set it to white here. So label one. And the uh, text color is somewhere in here. Uh, there it is. And then that goes to white. There we go. So we're going to try it again. And yay, it worked. Excellent. So <clears throat> let's keep moving. And we got another video. Excellent. All right. So we're going to. They're going to talk to us about images and sounds. Next, you'll learn about adding images and sounds to your app. Let's start by checking out the sound options. In the toolbox, you'll find a new block called Play Sound. Drag it into the workspace. You can pick a sound to play by clicking the drop down, then clicking Choose. 
From here, you can either upload a sound file from your computer or search for a sound from the sound library. The sound library has lots of different categories, like instruments, background music, or animals. Once you've got the sound you want, click choose. When this block runs, it'll play the sound you chose. To add images to your elements, you can just use the set property block. Select the image property in the second dropdown. Then select choose from the third dropdown. From here, you can upload an image from your computer, or you can look through a huge library of icons in the icon library. Back in code mode, you can use the set property block to change the icon color of your icon. Once you've picked what image or icon to use, click run to see how it looks. That's all there is to it. Now you can start adding images and sounds to make your apps even more fun and dynamic. All right, it's pretty cute. Okay, uh, so this part, we're gonna build out our app to um, actually do something with this last button. So if we click run right now, uh, it shows a soundboard with a monkey. <laughs> That's really loud. Tiger and a horse. And so this last button doesn't do anything yet, and that's what we need to work on. Um, so we're going to hit reset there. Uh, you'll note that when you run the app, it sets the button one's image to the monkey, tiger, and horse uh, for button two and three as well. And so we're going to just insert our next property here for button four. So this is that that button, ID4, uh, its image to something else. Um, so it's asking us to choose. Uh, so we can upload an image, add a link to an image, or add a bunch of icons. Um, so my idea when I ran through this lab before was to go to Wikipedia, and they actually have a list of animal sounds and I'm going to do a cat here. So I'm going to, uh, I think, copy the image address. I hope this works. Uh, so copy image address, and we're going to try it out here real quick. Yep, it worked. Well, thank you. And so I'm going to copy and paste that guy right there. So if we run this, you'll note that, hey, you got a cat. Uh, so you can do this yourself if you'd like um, by going to wikipedia.org and searching for list of animal sounds. Awesome. Or I can copy this into the chat. Um, so what I did was just simply clicked on the animal and then copied the image uh, address and pasted it into the uh, thing here. Does it make sense? Oops, right here. So paste that. Oops, that's not the one that I wanted. Well, that's annoying. So we're going to try that again. Copy image address and change that one more time. Excellent. And re make sure it runs. Great. Okay. So moving on, um, our uh, little button here doesn't do anything yet. So we'll need to play a sound. Uh, but in order to do that, we need to make sure that uh, we have an on, an on event here to know when the buttons click so we know when to play the sound. So again, this is button ID 4. So we're going to reset button ID 4. So we're going to fill that in right there. When it's clicked, we're going to go ahead and play a sound. Um, so they actually have a bunch of different animal sounds or app sounds or whatever. We're going to click animals. And they should have a cat, and they do. So we're going to 
click on that guy right there. Click choose. And that gives us this sound URL for the cat MP3. Go ahead and run that. And voila, we have a working button that says it, it's a meowing cat. Uh, I don't like the text you choose. Um, so I'm going to set the button's text property to something else. This is not required if, well, I guess you can change it to whatever you want. So I'm going to say the button text is going to be cat. Yep, Got to make it a, there we go. Cat. Yep, everything still works. Excellent. Uh, any questions so far? All righty. Let's keep moving. All right. So they're going to introduce design mode. Let's check it out. To build your own apps, you're going to need to start designing screens and elements from scratch. App Lab makes this easy to do with design mode. Use the switch on top of your app to go into design mode. You can add new elements by dragging them onto the screen. You can move them around to different locations and change their size by dragging the bottom right corner. To change an element's properties, use the controls on the right. For example, it's really easy to change this button's text, color, and font size. When you add a new element to your screen, it'll get a generic ID like button one. It's a good idea to change this ID to something more meaningful, like right button, so that you'll know which one it is when you go to the program. If you add an element to your app by mistake, just drag it out or hit delete. You can add entirely new screens to your app by dragging in a screen element. From the drop down at the top, you can quickly switch back and forth between the screens you create. Inside your app, you'll need a way to switch between all of these screens. So the set screen block has been added to the toolbox. Use set screen inside an on event block to change screens at the click of a button. In the next few levels, you'll be working on a single project. First, you'll add a button, then you'll add a new screen. And finally, you'll write code so that the button switches to the new screen. All right, that's really exciting. So Ooh, what happened? What did I miss? Oh, well, we got design mode here. Uh, I'll show you how it works. Uh, so uh, design mode allows you to, like the video said, drag and drop whatever um, elements that you want onto the screen here. And it looks like they're asking us to do a right button, just like they showed us in uh, in the video. So I am just dragging my little button here from the design toolbox onto the screen on the left. Uh, so to match the size of the other button, I'm going to reposition the right corner. There we go. To match the other button there. So uh, let's get the formatting correct. Um, she also called out that, and this is a, a good coding practice to name our IDs something that we can identify easily um, within our program and understand what the ID is pointing to. Yeah. What's your question? I, um, a long time ago, I tried to do the, uh, the App Lab um, thing, and it wouldn't let me do it because I was under 13. How do I, how do I get past that? With uh, parents' permission, you can do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you if with you your, log in with a parent's account while they're there, you can you can bypass the age check with parental permission. Mm -hmm. And um, are the other ways too? Uh, I'm not familiar with all the. Because I think it was already in my experience that it didn't do it. Yeah. 
but I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's a problem. All right, so let's just have you keep following along, and then um, when you I can get somebody, well, follow, watch watch the watch my demo, and then later uh, maybe get your parents' permission or your guardian's permission to uh, to see this. Okay, um, but uh, let's keep moving here. Uh, so, like I was saying, the right button here. So we're going to type right button. And that will point here. So we have an ID of right button now. We have left button. Uh, I like to keep the formatting the same as what's already there. So left button, right button. Excellent. So let's keep moving here. Um, the buttons themselves uh, don't do anything yet. And what we're doing right now is just setting the base uh, properties of the buttons. Um, and we can change those properties dynamically later. Say we wanted to change the color or whatever. When you click it, you can do that later. Um, you won't be able to do any on events in the design mode. Well, you just have these events, but uh, it, you know what I mean? It, it's like you want to get to the code after you're done here. Uh, the design mode's purely for static aesthetics and some basic events. Um, so uh, they want us to change the color to uh, a red color. Um, so I'm going to go down here, go red. That looks kind of like the red that they have. Uh, <laughs> there we go. That's, that's more like the red that they're asking for. Uh, what other properties can we change here? Uh, we can change the button's text. So I'm going to say right. And uh, I believe she set the font size a little bigger here. So we're going to click on this guy for the orange button, the left button. Go down to its font size, and it's 30. So we're going to click the right button here and change its font size to 30. Uh, so how I did that was I simply, um, within design mode, you can click on the button itself. It will change from left to right if you want. Uh, it'll highlight it. And then you can change the properties of the button, each button or each label, or each image uh, here on the right. And so I got the font size from there and then copied it over to our red button. All right, so let's run that. Uh, yep, I went left. Great, I don't think our right button does anything. Nope, it doesn't do anything. So let's keep going here, which, you know, the goals of this was simply to change the button to the right or create a right button. <laughs> uh, okay, so this next one is asking us to uh, do something when you click the right button. Um, again, the right button doesn't do anything yet. Um, in design mode, drag in a new screen element. So what we'll need to do here first, our first step, uh, in order to hook this up and do something with it, um, I believe they want the right button to show uh, you went right screen. So we're going to drag and drop from the design toolbox onto our screen to create screen one here. Um, I'm going to name the ID right screen for uh, better understandability, I guess. Um, and then uh, now we'll need to drag a label. Where's our labels? Text input, canvas, text area, chart. There it is, label. All right, so this one is, um, well, let's see, right label, I guess. Uh, and the text, we're going to change it to you and right. All right. Um, and I believe you can drag this around a bit. So we're going to drag this right here, make it nice and big. Excellent. Uh, and then change the background color to red. Uh, background color, red, there we go. 
and then the font color needs to be white. So we can actually change this to white. There we go. Excellent. Uh, I don't know what the font size here is. I'm going to guess that's too big. Uh, let's try 50, that's still too big. Let's try 30, eh, it's pretty close. And we're gonna align it in the center. I don't know if we can do a vertical alignment here. I'm not seeing a vertical alignment. So we're gonna call it good. Uh, you went right, excellent. So if we run this, it's gonna start out here. Uh, if we click on this, it doesn't work yet, but we know the screen is there. So we need to uh, change our program to do something else. So we're gonna go to the code section and give our on event for our button that we created, the right button. And when you click it, it's going to set the screen to the right screen, the screen that we just created. So, uh, and we can even have a, a sound, but we're just we're just gonna start with this. And you went right; it worked. Uh, excellent. And I think that completes the goal here. Any other questions? Any questions? I think the possibilities for that app to be able to, like. Hey, what do you want to choose for dinner? And you put up your app thing, and you've got buttons, and people don't know what they're going to hit, but they hit a button. It's like like secret choosing things, or magic mm -hmm. eight ball, that kind of thing. It's kind of cool. Excellent. Uh, anything else? I'm going to move on here. Okay, I'm going to keep moving. I think we're doing okay for time. Good. Okay, so this ne the next goal is the screen switches to right screen when the user clicks the right button. Oh, well, we already did that. Oops, I guess uh, I went a little far, <laughs> farther than I should have. Uh, let's just test it again, make sure it works. Yep, good, good, good. Let's keep moving. So the reason I'm moving on is I already did this. <laughs> uh, and so we can keep moving here. So this next part is about sharing your app. And let's take a look at that. Now that you've learned some of the basics of App Lab, like adding buttons, sounds, images, text, and new screens, you can make all sorts of apps. In the next level, you'll find the app you just finished building. With a little creativity, you can turn this into a personality quiz for your friends, a greeting card that you can share with your family, or a choose your own adventure game. All of these apps are just a combination of the skills you've already learned. And I bet you can come up with even more. Once you're done with your app, you can easily send it to your phone to see how it'll look. Just click share and enter your phone number here. You'll receive a text message that'll let you open up your app instantly. You can also share a link to your app over social media or publish it to the code.org public gallery for other people to play and share. You've just scratched the surface of what App Lab can do. Full App Lab features more advanced user interactions, new screen elements, and even a built-in database so you can quickly build full featured apps. At code.org slash App Lab, you'll find the full tool and lots of ideas if you wanna keep going. Thanks for coming along the ride. Now go build and share your first app and keep on building apps with App Lab. Excellent, that's exciting. Uh, so um, I'm gonna hit continue here. Uh, so this part is more open-ended. Uh, I, I didn't really, I don't have any other ideas, but if you guys do, that's, that's great. Uh, you can get to this step and take it away from here and see what you can build with it. Um, 
And like she was saying, you can share your app. Uh, they have this link. You can send it to your phone. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, the next step, I guess, if you wanted to explore more apps that are out there that have been published uh, publicly, you can go back to the link that I sent, um, Educate App Lab. Uh, and scroll down to their starter projects. So we can, there's this concept in code.org of remixing. Um, so you take an app and you modify it and save it as your own. Uh, that's the concept behind remixing. Um, there's also demos for creating apps with App Lab. Um, and then obviously there's other, other uh, lesson plans for teachers uh, video libraries of uh, kind of like documentary style um, and other learning uh, resources here. Um, yeah, all of this is really important. Conditionals and Boolean logic, loops and arrays. Uh, those are very uh, core concepts of programming that I would recommend um, taking a look at when you get a chance. So. Uh, yeah, this page, again, can be found at the link that I sent at the very beginning of our, uh, of my presentation here. Um, let's, let's just try one here, uh, just to show you how to do this. Um, so this particular app, I'm not sure how it works, but I can give it a try. Oh, it's like an Etch-a-Sketch. That's cool. Uh, excellent. I like it. Um, so you'll see that there, there is code over here. You can change it if you want here, or you can click the little Remix button. And it will refresh. And all of a sudden, this is now your project. You can rename it to whatever you want. Uh, Tim's Remix of Remix Slider. <laughs> uh, there we go. And I can save that. And now it's mine. Um, it's the same code. It won't modify the original code. So you're not modifying a public project. You're modifying your own. And you can take this and run with it. And you can make it your own. You can change the color of the sliders. You can change whatever you want. Uh, it's The sky's the limit within this. This is a fully functional, uh, like, uh, integrated development environment, an IDE, as they call it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, um, I think that's, that's all I had. Uh, any questions? Thank you, Tim. I think that was awesome. And uh, I just want to say I recommend that all the ninjas here create a code.org account, because then it'll let you do things like save your progress. You can use the tools without signing in so you can play around. But I think having an account lets you save progress, remix, do things just like Scratch. So it's a code.org specific account. So strongly recommend you do that. And by the way, this tool looks pretty cool. I haven't gone and played with it in a while, but seeing what you did with it is pretty nice. Thank mm -hmm. you, Tim. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, uh, did we have anything else on our Yes, lesson? do you have any questions? We don't have to go for the full hour and a half. If we get through the project and uh, everybody's cool, then I just say we start it playing with accounts and do some stuff. Okay. Well, you know what? I think the sun is coming out. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think that's awesome. Okay. So um, I, I guess we're going to call the meeting order early and let you guys go out and play with it. Um, mm -hmm. If that's okay. All right. Tim, awesome job. Thank you again. And yeah, you're welcome. All the hey. Everybody who came. That's awesome. Hey, Bob, if you wanted to stick around, maybe we can uh, troubleshoot your problem. But everybody else, thank you for coming. All right. Yeah, yeah, Tim, I, I, I got to the uh, location of, of that uh, file that you were doing, and, and I had already started it uh, a while back. But anyway, I... I I followed what was happening, what you were doing.
what I was interested in finding out was generating your, um, let's just say, well, I guess, you know, I think I follow, I think I understand what's, um, what I was going to ask was, you just have to go into design and mm -hmm. tell it to say a button and then add a, uh, a text to it um, or let's see, okay, screen one, uh, code, let's see. It's, it's a renaming something that is, that you want to qualify for the, okay, I'm on screen one, but I put a button on the screen and I'm trying to get it to, uh, oh, there it is. Okay. And you just identify it uh, for the um, what you have, whether or not it's a a text or whether it's a button or whether you know it's a, an image. You bring it in from the design part, and then you can manipulate it in the code part. Mm -hmm. So that that's where. I was getting confused because when I first was doing the project, I had a generic um, 